Greg Maffei, Liberty Media CEO and President, joins us exclusively now. Greg, you know I'm, I'm the, the senior media uh, racing correspondent now, so this is a very big deal <laughs> in our world. <laughs> Greg. Hello, Sarah. Hello. That's, that's so, a great title. Are you going to, I just made it up, are you going to follow the playbook here for Formula One on, on MotoGP? Well, I'm not sure it's the playbook, but I'd like to think that some of the things that we've done to help the world see the value and power of Formula One, we can bring to MotoGP. Let's call it pattern recognition. The uh, MotoGP is a great, thrilling sport, uh, enormously exciting. I don't think we need to change that at all. In fact, we don't want to. What we want to do is show the world how exciting that sport is. It seems like four and a half billion dollars is a big price for a, a sport that many of us here in the U.S. do not follow and have not heard of. How, how do you justify it? I do remember when you bought Formula One a few years ago, that was also considered a very rich price. <laughs> That's your loss to date, sir, and we're going to change that. You're going to become a huge fan, and I think a lot of the world can become a huge fan. This is a sport with an appropriately excited, passionate fan base, much of it in Spain, Italy, and France. Our goal is to show the rest of the world how exciting this sport is. Hey, Greg, it's David. Um, talk to a couple Hello, of your David. shareholders. You know, they say, listen, as you might expect, they think um, your stock trades at a multiple that's too low, but they wonder, and I'm looking here in the release and not seeing it, but I just may have missed it, is this accretive? How did you view this versus, for example, buying back shares of Formula One? Yeah, we expect this transaction will be accretive in the near term. The, uh, the opportunity to buy back shares is there. And we think actually because of the strong free cash flow characteristics of both F1 and MotoGP, we should be able to do that, both of the, that going forward, do this transaction and do share repurchase going forward. Are there any synergies here between these two or are they just going to remain completely separate? Well, this will be a, a separately headquartered company run by the existing management team. Uh, it, it will be run independently uh, in every way. I think there are it's not a case so much of revenue synergies or uh, cost synergies here as it is. I mentioned already taking some of the learnings, taking some of the successes we had with Formula One and bringing some of those ideas and some of that uh, excitement and that passion, which is in the fan base and extending it to a broader audience around the world, with some degree we've been able to pull off at Formula One. What would that, so what would an example of that be? Well, currently uh, they have one race in the United States. Uh, when we took over at Formula One, it also had only one race in the United States, as you may recall. I'm not suggesting we're going to get to three, but the opportunity to grow in the U.S., the opportunity to grow in other markets, other geographies, 12 currently in the EU, uh, opportunities to grow in other geographies, probably not increase the total race number, but to extend it to new geographies is very exciting. Are you going to be able to get a Netflix show for them as well? <laughs> I don't know about that. That was a we'll game talk changer. To... It was, though I want to note it wasn't the only game changer. What really was the game changer was changing the focus from, in some cases, being about the car to being about the stories of F1. And we had to reach out and touch fans where they existed. And some fans want to know exactly the difference between RB20 and RB19 and what tire strategy. And other fans think that this driver is cute or that part <laughs> is exciting and glamorous. And our goal is to try and reach all of those fans where they are and what ex excites them. And I think that opportunity exists in MotoGP as well. And so the playbook of social media, the playbook of storytelling, yeah. the playbook of fan zones, the playbook of creating F1 excitement in many places. We'll try and follow that part of the playbook.